dear students, today we are going to discuss about class 9 science and technology unit 2 classification of living beings. We have already discussed about the some parts of this chapter that is binomial system of nomenclature where we have learned about the how we name the organisms by using binomial system of nomenclature. Today we are going to discuss about the five kingdom system of classification. There are various process of classification, but here we are going to discuss about the five kingdom system of classification. Okay, let us start with a small story. Once Roshan and his brother were going for morning walk. Do you go for morning walk? Okay, they were going for morning walk. Suddenly, Roshan's brother had seen something amazing on the roadside. Then he shouted, Brother, see there is a white plant. He had not seen such kind of organism before. So, he was amazed and he just shouted and shown to his brother, there is a white plant. Have you seen white plant? No. Then Roshan answered his brother very lovingly. This is not a plant, it is a fungus. Roshan said to his brother, there are, that means those that which he has seen is not a plant, it is a fungus. As Roshan's brother had seen only plants and animals around him, he thought that that white colored organism was a plant, but Roshan answered him very lovingly, it is not a plant, it is a fungus. Then Roshan's brother was amazed and he said, fungus? But it looks like a plant. As he observed that white plant like structure, that means there, he observed that there is a stem and there is just like an umbrella and he guessed that it might be a plant. So, he said it is a plant, but his brother said that it is not plant, but it is a fungus. Do you know what is fungus? Okay, fungus means it is a saprotroph that means which grow on dead and decaying organic matter, you know. Okay, next again Roshan answered very gently. He said, there are various types of organisms on the surface of earth not only plants and animals, but also there are many tiny microorganisms which cannot be seen through the naked eyes like bacteria and some fungus also or fungi that means plural form of fungus is fungi. In this way, he explained his brother about the different kinds of organisms which cannot be included within the plants and animals. He said there are not only plants and animals, but also there are various types of organisms which we cannot include inside the plant and animal. They have the different characteristics than the plants and animal. So, they should be kept in different group.
then in this chapter just taking the moral of that story we are going to discuss about the five kingdom system okay that means why it is necessary to classify the organism why should we group the organisms here we discuss about that there are many types of organisms we can't study each and every organism separately it takes very long time and it is very difficult to remember each and everyone's characteristics so to make the study easier we have to group the organism we have to classify the organisms so there are various system that means many scientists try to classify the organism in a different ways you know different ways they try to classify like some some scientist group the organisms in two groups some in six groups some in seven groups some in five groups but till now which is widely used in the world is five kingdom system so we discuss this today what is five kingdom system and what is the importance of classification what is two kingdom system why it is not used based on that we will continue our class first one is importance of classification of living beings why should we classify the organism what are what are the needs of this why can't we study all together it is that means the first one just in a previous class we discussed about the evolutionary things also yeah here the classification organisms always help to know about the evolutionary trend of living organisms on the surface of the earth that means did the organism evolve at the time of formation of earth no then how the organisms origin and how they evolve from primitive to advanced we can know from this classification of living beings so it is important to know the evolutionary trend of living organisms and next at a time we can't study the many organism so to minimize the time period to study the organism this classification of living organism is very helpful and here the while nomen nomenclature that means when we no name the organism there is also different problems arise but if we classify the organism and group the organisms in a particular group that means already we have studied in the previous class how the order of classification or the how, how the hierarchical order of classification we have seen so based on that we can compare the organism and in which genus and species can we keep this organism based on that we can name the organism so it is very helpful to make the naming very scientific and also it gives the relation among the organisms as well as the natural relationship between the organism as well as nature and organism also so it is very important for these points and this in overall we can say that the classification makes the study of organism very easier and also very scientific therefore this classification of living organism is very important now previously two kingdom system of classification is widely used what is two kingdom system of classification in two uh, that means at first carolus linnaeus as we called him as a father of modern taxonomy he classified these organisms into two kingdoms one is plant kingdom another one is animal kingdom just 
we have studied the story of Roshan's, Roshan and Roshan's brother as based on that he thought that the fungus also belong to which one plant according to two kingdom system that he was right but his his brother said instead of plant kingdom it is different so it should be a fungi here as i have told you carolus linnaeus was the person who classify the organisms into two kingdoms here in these two kingdoms what are there there are two kingdom that is animal kingdom and plant kingdom how he kept these organisms in the plant kingdom and animal kingdom based on the cell wall mode of nutrition which is autotrophic and those which do not show locomotion which have cell wall and which do not show the response to the external stimuli those all were kept on the plant kingdom and in, a, in another group which do not have cell wall and generally mode of nutrition is heterotrophic and they show the response to the stimuli as well as they show the moment those are kept in the animal kingdom but while doing so there are so many drawbacks are seen even though some organisms having some different characteristics were also kept in the same group so because of that again this is that means it is some drawbacks we have found and some the drawbacks we discuss here first drawback is in this two kingdom system the prokaryotes and eukaryotes already you know that what are prokaryotes and what are eukaryotes prokaryotes means those organisms which do not have a definite nucleus just dna is present inside the cytoplasm those are prokaryotes and eukaryotes means which have true nucleus okay definite shape of nucleus nuclear material is enclosed inside the nuclear membrane those are even these different characteristics no but they are kept in the same group that is one drawback and another drawback is even in this king the two kingdom system unicellular organism as well as multicellular organism unicellular means the organism having single cell and multicellular means just like blue well it very giant animal yeah largest animal and very simple organism that is amoeba having single cell all were kept in the same kingdom that is animal kingdom so that is also another drawback and another one is photosynthetic algae and the non photosynthetic fungi that means algae possess chlorophyll fungi do not possess chlorophyll but those are kept in the same group that is inside the plant that is another one and next one is this two kingdom system was unable to include all the kind of animals or plants or the other organisms tiny microorganisms therefore that is also another drawback okay these are the some of the drawbacks of the two kingdom system to overcome these drawbacks again that means another scientist called robert h whitaker robert harding whitaker has proposed the five kingdom system here it was in 1969 he proposed this concept of five kingdom system where he classified all the living organisms found on the surface of the earth into five kingdoms five groups that is 
that from primitive to advanced one based on different criteria. In five kingdom system, he kept that means he classified the living organism into monera, most primitive, then protista, fungi, plants and animals. There are five kingdoms he separated based on different criteria. Based on different criteria, he classified the organisms having that means some which are very similar to each other just like in Monera he kept all the prokaryotes. In Protista he kept unicellular organism. In fungi he kept chlorophyll not containing or the in which cell wall is present but chlorophyll is absent like that he kept these organisms in the different groups that is five kingdom Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plants and Animals. Then on which criteria, criteria did he classify these organisms? He chose five criteria, five criteria for the classification of these organisms. Okay, let us discuss one by one what are those criteria. Okay, first criteria is structure of cell. What you understand when you say the structure of cell? Till now we have discussed so many times prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. What do you mean by prokaryotic cell? Do you know the characteristics of prokaryotic cell? Yes, prokaryotic cell means What? Yes, those cell which are very primitive cell which do not have definite nucleus and the genetic material that is DNA is present in the cytoplasm and also it do not have any double membrane cell organelles like mitochondria, plastids and there are that means even ribosome is also different. So, based on that structure, these prokaryotes are very primitive and another one is eukaryotic, structure is different from prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, what happens, there is a true nucleus, there is a definite nucleus and also they, there are dif different double membrane cell organelles. See, in case of here, there, this is bacterial cell which is prokaryotes there is the DNA is within the cytoplasm ok. There is no definite nucleus which is not covered with any cell nuclear membrane there is no nucleolus etc. But if we see the plant cell and animal cell these two cells are eukaryotic cell. In this eukaryotic cell there is nucleus and see here there is nucleus and there are double membrane cell organelles like plastids, mitochondria, plastids and other many cell organelles are present here. Already you have known in class 8 also we have studied about the structure of cell yeah and there is different between that there is a difference between um, mainly plant cell and animal cell what is the difference? There is cell wall and absence of cell wall yeah and other plastids also in case of plant cell there is plastids but in case of animal cell there is no plastids like that we can say but these two are eukaryotic cell and they have definite nucleus. But in case of bacterial cell there is no definite nucleus only genetic material that is DNA present in the cytoplasm. The first criteria was this. Based on this, he that means those which have prokaryotic cell, he kept th them in the monera, which is the very primitive kingdom, and having eukaryotic cell in a different group. Again, within the eukaryotes also, they have different characteristics. That is also we discuss. Okay, next criteria is structure of body. That is second criteria. In 
just we have discussed about the structure of cell yeah and in eukaryotic cell even those organisms which have eukaryotic cell they may be again different in the their body structure so based on the structure of body these organisms can be classi classified into two groups again that is unicellular and multicellular uni means single and multi means many you understand yeah unicellular organisms means those organisms which have single cell body those are kept in one kingdom and another group is multicellular multicellular means the body is made up of many cells again in this multicellular organism again the structure of the body is different even the other characteristics are different so he choose the third criteria and he choose the third criteria to classify this multicellular organisms third criteria he he has taken mode of nutrition already we have discussed about the nutrition the process of taking food and getting energy from that food and based on this mode of nutrition it is widely divided into two groups that is autotrophic and heterotrophic autotrophic and heterotrophic autotrophic means auto means self self food making yeah heterotrophic means from food obtained from the others in simple word we can say those which can prepare their own food autotroph those which cannot prepare but they take food from the others those are heterotroph so the mode of nutrition is autotrophic nutrition self preparing food and heterotrophic nutrition obtaining food from others now autotrophic mode of nutrition where do we see where who can prepare their own food yes plants can green plants only green plants can prepare their own food how by the process of photosynthesis how photosynthesis takes place yes already you have know, known in lower classes you have studied about the photosynthesis what is photosynthesis yes it is the process of preparing food by green plants by utilizing carbon dioxide water in the presence of sunlight in chlorophyll okay in photosynthesis what they do in green plants there is chlorophyll that is their utensil to prepare the food and they use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere they absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they absorb water from the soil the carbon dioxide and water is raised to the chlorophyll and in the presence of sunlight they make their food this process is called photosynthesis so those which prepare the food by photosynthesis they those are called autotrophs and this type of nutrition is called autotrophic mode of nutrition so based on that again these are grouped into plants those which can prepare their own food they are kept in the where plants just in the plants already i have told you in plant cell and animal cell plant cell have the cell wall two okay and next one is and here heterotrophic mode of nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition means they are unable to prepare their own food they depends on others they take the food prepared by others even though they take the food from others but the process of taking food is also different okay based on that these are again classified into various types like those which possess holozoic nutrition those which possess parasitic nutrition which possess 
other that means say holozoic nutrition. What is holozoic nutrition? See, this girl, this girl is having some food. He see is drinking something, and when he when she drink, what happens? It passes to the stomach. That means this process of taking, just taking is ingestion. This holozoic nutrition completes in five steps. That is ingestion. Then when it reaches to the stomach, there is digestion occur. That is second step. And after digesting food, when it passes to the small intestine, the villi present in the small intestine will absorb that nutrients which are required for the body. Okay, and that is called absorption. And af after absorbing those nutrients which are required for the body, those will be assimilated throughout the body through blood circulation. That is assimilation. And those substances which are not necessary for the body will be ejected from the where through through the anus. That is ejection. In that means holozoic nutrition completes in the five step: ingestion, digestion, assim, absorption, assimilation, and ejection. So those organisms which possess such type of nutrition, those are kept in another group. Okay, even though they have the heterotrophic mode of nutrition, but the process of getting energy or taking food and from the food how they get energy that is different. And next one is saprotrophic nutrition. Yes, in saprotrophic nutrition, what happens? These are also heterotrophs. They cannot prepare their own food, but these organisms have cell wall too. Okay. And they used to decompose the dead bodies of the plants and animals. They decompose the dead bodies of the plants and animals, and they get energy from them. Such type of nutrition is called saprotrophic nutrition. Okay, like fungus. Yes, and those used to get the food or the energy from dead and decayed part of the plants and animals. Next one is parasitic nutrition. The, that means those, they, they are also heterotrophs, but they do not follow these two types. Just they take the, they just absorb the ready-made food. That is, for example, leech, it used to suck the blood from the vertebrates. So, this type of like leech, louse, mosquitoes, they used to suck blood from the others, those are parasitic organism or parasites. This type of nutrition is parasitic nutrition. Based on this also, organisms are classified into various groups. And fourth criteria is mode of utilization of energy. Okay, there are various type of mode of nutrition we have. Then how the energy is transferred from one organism to another organism in the environment. Based on that also, we can group the organisms into various form. So, he took the another criteria that is mode of utilization of energy. Here, just in this, just already we have discussed about the autotrophs here. Plants, they used to make the energy or they used to make the food by using the natural source of energy like sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, etc. These are the producer. Then these are again, the, they are supplying the food to the other organisms, okay, like animals. Those are the consumers. They are consuming the food prepared by the plants. Even in the consumers, there are various st steps. Some directly feed on the plants, some used to feed on the other animals based on that the consumers are again classified into various type like primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, quaternary like this it goes. See here again another chart you can see here. In this way there are that means various type of consumers. Consumers are also again types primary, secondary, tertiary even I have already told you that quaternary and in apex level also there are many steps of transfer of energy one to another. For example, here this 
insect take the food from the plants. So, it is a primary consumer and it is returned by this frog and this is secondary like this and uh, this snake eat the frog. So, it is a tertiary and similarly this uh, snake is eaten by the vulture or eagle then in this way energy is transforming. At last what happens? All these organisms after death what happens? Plants, animals all died. Then what happens? These are decomposed by the decomposers like fun fungi, yes, bacteria they used to decompose them. Again they will that means they provide the nutrients to the producer. So, it does it is going on in cyclic way that is also another way of classification. Okay. And next one is fifth criteria, evolutionary, evolutionary history. So, many time we have discussed evol evolution, yeah, evolutionary that means how the organisms are evolving, how the organisms are originated, which one is first evolved and after that which one like that based on that there is a life tree, tree of life. See here very primitive organisms at the base and like you first prokaryotes then even in the eukaryotes there are unicellular then some multicellular then even multi that means tissue graded organ graded then system graded and finally there are very advanced organisms are developed that is the evolutionary trend or the evolutionary history of living organisms is also another criteria for the classification of living organism. Let us see how the organisms are classified based on those 5 ca categories or the 5 criteria. See first we have said based on the structure of cell, prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Within the prokaryotic cell those which possess these prokaryotic cells all are kept in the monera. Okay. After that in the eukaryotic again it is divided into multicellular and unic unicellular. In unicellular that means those organisms which possess only single cell those all are kept in the another kingdom that is protista. And within the multicellular also again another the structure that is taken whether the cell the multicellular organism have the cell wall or not. If cell wall is present in one category without cell wall kept in the another category that is kept as a animalia, kingdom animalia. Okay. And those which do not have the cell wall, these are again classified into phototrophic and heterotrophic. That is, that means those which are able to prepare the food by using light. So, it is also called autotrophs, okay. Photo means light. So, they are using sunlight. So, they are also called phototrophic okay. and another one is heterotrophic that means within even though they have the cell wall they are again kept in the fungi as they are not able to prepare the food. But these animals are also heterotroph already we have discussed okay. In this way the organisms are classified into 5 kingdoms that is monera very primitive somewhat developed than monera that is protista. Then again other three groups that is planty, fungi and animalia. Here five kingdoms examples are given here see in monera there are bacteria in protista the unicellular organisms plant all the green plants in animalia there are many animals and in fungi there is mushroom is shown here other fungus like mucor, rhizopause so many examples are there. Now once you see here Whitaker's five kingdom classification there are with example here this is first kingdom here monera all monerans here see there are various types of bacteria. Some bacteria are rod shape, some are spiral shape, some are spherical shape, some poses flagella all belongs to this because they have the prokaryotic cell and all unicellular organisms kept in the protist. And those which have cell wall and which possess heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is saprotrophic mode of nutrition those are in the kingdom fungi. And another one is kingdom 
plant where all green plants are there and another one is kingdom animal where all animals are kept. In this way, the, he classified the organisms into five kingdoms and he also explained how he classified the organism based on those five criteria just we have studied. Okay. Now, we discuss some questions which are related to this. First question, which kingdom represents the organisms without definite nucleus? Already we have discussed which one is good that is Monera. And next one is next question, which of the following are the examples of prokaryotic microorganisms? Yes, there are so many examples are given see first one is bacteria, cyanobacteria, lactobacillus. Have you heard these names? Yes, this is bacteria, cyanobacteria means these are blue green algae and lactobacillus means which convert, yes, this is also a bacteria which converts milk into cod, yeah and another one is euglena, yes, this is already we have seen in example also, yeah, euglena, unicellular organism, bacteria and cyanobacteria. Here again euglena bacteria yeast, another one is cyanobacteria lactobacillus amoeba. Okay. Which one is the example of prokaryotes? Yeah, very good. All bacteria which are what? Prokaryotes. So, this bacteria, cyanobacteria and lactobacillus belong to prokaryotic microorganisms. Okay. Next question, who proposed the five kingdom system of classification? All of you know, yeah? Yes, very good. That is Robert Harding Whittaker. And next question, let us see, which is the correct evolutionary order of living organisms? Okay, just now we have discussed, yes? Here, Monera, Animalia, Protista. Animalia, Protista, Monera. Which one? Which is the order? Okay. Again, Protista, Animalia, Monera. Monera, Protista, Animalia. Okay. Very good. This is D. That is first Monera, very primitive, then somewhat developed than Monera, Protista, then Animalia. Okay. We have discussed about the five kingdom system, how it was classified and some examples also. Thank you students. Okay, we will meet in next class. Thank you.